Hello my schoolers, you are welcome to my school channel and my name is Frank. In this video, we are going to be tackling JAMP CBT Physics Pass question for the year 2023. Please do not go anywhere, stay with us, we'll be right back. Welcome back to my school channel. In this video, we are going to be tackling question 41 to 65. So let's begin with question 41. The diagram above illustrates the penetrating power of some types of radiation. X, Y, and Z are likely. So what you must know about radiation is that the penetrating power of radiation depends on the energy of the radiation. Okay, and the energy of the radiation in turn depends on the frequency of the radiation. So what that means is that those radiations with highest frequency, okay, will penetrate through more materials than those ones with uh, low frequency. So if you look at Y, Y could not even penetrate through paper. Okay, if you look at Z, Z could penetrate through paper but could not penetrate the aluminium sheet. Okay, then look at um, X. S could penetrate the paper, penetrate through the aluminium uh, sheet and could not penetrate through the thick lead sheet. Okay, so S here has the highest penetrating power. Okay, that means it has the highest energy. And as such, S here is a gamma ray. Okay, gamma ray has the highest penetrating power of the three radiations of a radioactive uh, substance. Okay, so S here stands for gamma ray. Okay, why Z stands for beta particles? Why Y here stands for alpha particles? Okay, so that makes option C the correct option. So S, like I said, stands for your gamma ray. Your Y stands for your alpha particle. Why your Z stands for your beta particle? So option C is the correct option. Question 42. An explosion occurs at an altitude of 312 meter above the ground. If the air temperature is minus 10 degrees Celsius, how long does it take the sand to reach the ground? Velocity of sand at zero degrees is given as 331 meter per second. So let's move over to the board to solve this question. Okay, so for this question, one thing you must note is that the velocity of sand in air is directly proportional to the square root of its absolute temperature. Okay, so that V2 over V1 is equals to the square root of T2 over T1. Okay, so but these temperatures must be measured in Kelvin. So we have to convert all this to um, temperature in Kelvin. So this will be equals to 273 Kelvin. Why this will be equals to 263 Kelvin, okay? Because here we just have to say minus 10 plus 273 and that will give us 263 Kelvin. Okay, so from here, let's, let's plug in our values. So V2 is actually what we are looking for, but we know V1 to be equal to 331. Then, here we put in our values. Our T2 is equal to 263 all over uh, 273. Okay, since we are looking for V, we just uh, divide or multiply both sides. Okay, we multiply both sides by 331 to cancel out 331 from this side so that V2 can be on its own. So that V2 is equal to 331 times the square root of 263 divided by 273. Okay, and this whole thing will be equal to 324. 0.88 meter per second square. Okay, but you must not forget that we are actually looking for we are looking for time. How long it will take the uh, the sound to reach the ground? Okay, but remember that velocity is equal to distance over time. Now remember that in physics, velocity and speed are used interchangeably. Okay, so that velocity also just like speed is also equal to distance over time. We are looking for time, and we already know speed. Okay, remember that the altitude actually stands for the distance, vertical distance here. Okay, so our D will be equal to 312 over our velocity, which is 324.88, right? So our T will be equal to 0 0.96 seconds. Okay, so let's move over to the screen to pick the correct option. So from our calculation, we actually got 0. 
90 seconds. Okay, so that make option B the correct option. Question 43. A charge of 4.6 times 10 raised to the power minus 5 coulomb is placed in an electric field of intensity 3.2 times 10 raised to the power 4 volts per meter. What is the force acting on the electron? So let's move over to the board to solve that question. Now you must not forget that electric field intensity is related to force and, um, and charge by this equation E is equal to F over Q. Okay, but in this question, we are looking for F. So we just make F the subject of formula so that F is now equal to E times Q. Okay, so these values are given to us in the question. So our electric field intensity is 3.2 times 10 raised to the power 4. Then times the quantity of charge is 4.6 times 10 raised to the power minus 5. So if we multiply this together, this will be approximately equal to 1.5. Newton, okay, since force is measured in Newton. Okay, now one thing you must note is that the way you do your calculation is, or the way you pick your answer, sorry, is based on the options that are given to you. Okay, so sometimes you may perform some calculation, but your answer will not be exactly as 1.5. Okay, you have to what you have to approximate to get the right answer that tallies with the options that are given to you. So you must take note of you must take note of this. Let's move over to the screen to pick the correct option. Okay, so from our calculation, we actually got 1.5 Newton. Okay, so that makes option A the correct option, 1.5 Newton. Question 44. The branch of physics that deals with the motion of objects and the forces acting on them is called dash. So A, we have electromagnetism. So electromagnetism is the branch of physics okay, that shows the relationship between magnets and electricity. Okay, it has to do with the production of electricity from magnets. Okay, while option B is a branch of physics that deals with energy and work of a system. Okay, so that does not describe what we have in the question. Why C is actually the answer to this question because it describes the question they are actually asking for. So it's a branch of physics that deals with the motion of objects and the forces acting on them. Why option D, which is a quantum physics, has to do with matter and light, okay, on the atom and subatomic scale. So the answer to this question is option C, mechanics. Question 45. The working of the beam balance is based on the principle of A, moment, B, conservation of energy. The conservation of energy states, or the principle of conservation of energy states that energy can neither be created nor destroyed but can be changed from one form to another. So that is not the principle uh, that the beam balance is based on. Okay, then we have equivalence. The principle of equivalence is related to the principle of relativity, okay, which is a bit higher. So let's leave that aside. Then we move to D, which is flotation. So the principle of flotation says that when an object floats on a liquid or on a fluid, the buoyant force acting on the object is equal to the weight of the object okay so that makes option a the correct option okay so the working of the beam balance is based on the principle of moment okay which states that the sum of the clockwise moment about a point on a beam is equal to the sum of the anti-clockwise moment about the same point on the same beam okay but remember that moment means force times perpendicular distance okay so when calculation is performed okay for both sides of the beam the clockwise and that the clockwise moment calculation is performed and they are equal. It shows that the beam is in equilibrium. Okay, so that makes option A the correct option. Question 46. Which of the following is a type of incandescent light source? A. Fluorescent light. B. LED lamp. C. Tungsten filament lamp. And D. Neon lamp. So the answer to this question is option C. Tungsten filament lamp. So incandescent light source these are type of light source that produces light by heating a material until it glows. And the material that is usually heated is a metal. An example of such metal is tungsten. Okay, so that makes option C the correct option. Question 47. From the diagram above, if the potential difference across the resistor, capacitor, and inductor are 60 volts, 120 volts, and 30 volts respectively, the effective potential difference is 
So let's move over to the board to solve the question. So these are the parameters that are given to us according to the question. And we must note that this question is on RLC circuit. Okay. So the potential difference, okay, across the effective potential difference across RLC circuit is given as okay, V effective square is equals to V R square plus V L minus V C R square. Okay, so the values are given to us. So our V R is 30 squared plus, of course, you might play with having 60 minus 120 R squared. So this becomes, this is 30 squared. Of course, this will give us plus minus 60 squared. Okay, so that if we sort everything, this will be 900 plus, this will give us 3,600. Okay, so that our V effective square is equals to is equals to 4,500, okay, 4,500. So we take the square root of both sides so that our V effective, which is the, potential, the effective potential difference, is equals to square root of 4,500. And this will be approximately equal to 67. So let's move over to the screen to pick the correct option. Okay, so from our calculation, uh, the effective potential difference we got 67. So that makes option B the correct option, 67. Question 48. When light of a certain frequency is incident on a metal surface, no photoelectrons are emitted. If the frequency of the light is increased, what happens to the stopping potential? So A, the stopping potential does not change. B, the stopping potential decreases. C, the stopping potential can either increase or decrease depending on the intensity of the light. D, the stopping potential increases. So first of all, let's understand what we mean by stopping potential. So stopping potential is the voltage okay, that is required to stop the photoelectron from reaching the anode. Okay? So if the frequency of light is increased, then the kinetic energy of the photoelectrons too will also what we also increase. So in order to stop the photoelectrons from reaching the anode, then you must need a higher stopping potential. Okay, so that makes option D the correct option. The stopping potential will also increase. Okay, in order to stop the energetic photoelectrons from reaching the anode. Question 49. Which of the following is not a limitation of experimental measurement? A. Systematic error. B. Instrument resolution. C. Random errors. And D. Human errors. So the answer to this question is option B. Instrument resolution. By instrument resolution, we mean the smallest change in a major quantity that can be detected by an instrument. So instrument resolution itself it's not a limitation of experimental measurement, but it does affect or it does limit the accuracy of a measurement. So that makes option B the correct answer, instrument resolution. Question 50. Which of the following liquids has the highest surface tension? So we define surface tension as the force acting parallel to the surface of a liquid. Okay, and it is caused by cohesive forces between the molecules of a liquid. And we must know that the higher the cohesive forces between the molecules of a liquid, the higher the surface tension. So of all the options listed here, option A, soapy water, option B, water, option C, mercury, and D, uh, oil, oh yeah, mercury has the higher surface tension because the force of cohesion between the molecules of mercury is higher than the force of adhesion between the molecules of mercury and other substances. So that makes option C the correct option. Question 51. What is the name of the model of the atom that describes electron as orbiting the nucleus in specific energy level? So A, we have Bohr model, B, Dalton model, C, we have Rutherford model, and D, we have Thomson model. So the answer to this question is option A, the Bohr model. So it is the Bohr model that actually described electron as orbiting the nucleus in specific energy level. Although Rutherford also did the same thing, but Bohr provided a better explanation okay, for this model. Hence, this model was accredited to him. So the answer to this question is option A, the Bohr model. Do you know that you can take practice question with our simulated jam symmetric pass question? All you need to do is to click on the link in the description below and this will take you to my school website there you have to download my school mobile app for your android devices and my school software for your laptops and computer 
please go ahead and start practicing. Moving on to question 52. The electrolyte used in the nickel ion accumulator is dash. So the electrolyte, okay, usually used in the nickel uh, ion accumulator is a strong alkaline. Okay, so we are going to pick out the options that are not alkaline. Yes. So option A is not an alkaline, it's an acid. Okay, diluted tri also sulfate. Six acids, not an alkaline. Then option B, barium chloride solution is not an alkaline, it's a salt. So we remove them. So the answer lies between option C and option D because both of them are alkaline. Okay, but the answer to this question is option C, potassium hydroxide solution. Okay, and the reason for that is because potassium hydroxide solution has high conductivity okay it has low melting point and also because of its low cost okay so that's why option c is the correct answer question 53 which of the following materials is a good insulator so insulators are substances that do not allow electricity to pass through them okay and those substances are usually or they are mostly non-metals okay apart from carbon in form of graphite okay which allow electricity to pass through Okay, so let's look at the options given to us. Option A, silver is a metal. Option B, water is not a metal, it's a liquid. Okay, but water allows electricity to pass through it. So option C, we have rubber, which is a non-metal and does not allow electricity to pass through it. While option D, we have copper, okay, which is a metal and allows electricity to pass through it. So the correct option to this question is option C, rubber, that does not allow electricity to pass through it. Question 54. A generator manufacturing company accidentally made an AC generator instead of a DC generator. To fix this error, A, the magnetic field needs to be made stronger. C, B, sorry, the split rings should be replaced with a slip ring. Why C, the number of tons of the armature coil needs to be decreased. Why D, the slip ring should be replaced with a split ring. So one thing we must notice that an AC generator uses slip ring to transfer the induced current okay, to the circuit. While for a DC generator, uses a split ring to transfer the induced current to the circuit. Okay, so the answer to this question is option D. So what the manufacturer just need to do is to replace the slip ring of the AC generator with slip ring okay, to create a DC generator. So option D is the correct option. Question 55. Which of the following is not an example of elementary modern physics? So elementary modern physics is based on two major discoveries okay, of the 20th century and which are relativity okay, and quantum mechanics. Okay? So option A, classical physics. Classical physics is not, um, is not an example of elementary modern physics because it is that aspect of physics that is based on the motion of microscopic objects. Okay, why option B, option C, and option D are uh, uh, example of elementary modern physics. Okay, nuclear physics has to do with the nucleus okay, of an atom, which is also part of quantum mechanics. Okay, so that makes option A the correct option. Question 56. Which of the following is an example of a couple? Okay, so let's define what couple means in physics. Okay, so couple in physics simply means two equal and parallel but opposite forces not acting along the same line okay and uh, a couple what a couple does is that a couple only produces a rotating effect but does not produce any linear motion so let's go through the options so that we can pick the correct option so option a we have all of the above option b the forces that are applied to the handle of a screwdriver when you twist it then option c the forces that are applied to a cross wrench to loosen or tighten the slug nugs on a wheel of a car. Option D, the forces that are applied to the steering wheel of a car when you turn them. So if you look at all the uh, options given to us, discover that from options B to option D, there are all examples of couple. I said a couple does not only produce a turning effect, okay, it does not produce any linear motion. So of all the examples given to us, we always produce a turning effect. For example, let's talk about the force that is applied to the steering of a car. When you turn the steering of your car, your car will turn. Okay? Well, then if you look at when you are using a screwdriver, for example, to, um, to loosen a screw, the screw is only turning. So of all the examples given to us, they are all examples of a couple. So the answer to this question is option A, all of the above. Question 57. A positively charged particle is placed near a negatively charged particle. What is the direction of the electric force between the two particles? So option A, the electric force is directed from the negative particle to the 
positive particle, option B, the electric force is zero, C, the direction of the electric force cannot be determined, while option D, the electric force is directed from the positive particle to the negative particle. So according to the fundamental law of electrostatics, okay, which states that like charges will repair, while unlike charges we attract. Okay? So if a positively charged particle is placed near a negatively charged particle, what will happen to the direction of the electric force is that the electric force will be directed okay, from the positive particle towards the negative particle. So that makes option D the correct option. The electric force is directed from the positive particle to the negative particle. Question 58. When a water droplet is placed on a freshly cut piece of wood, it spreads out to form a thin layer because the wood is A, not at equilibrium with the water, B, cohesive to water, C, at equilibrium with the water, D, adhesive to water. Okay, so when a water droplet is placed on the wood, what will happen to the water droplet is that it will spread out to form a thin layer. And the reason for that is because the force of attraction between water molecule and the wood okay, is higher than the force of attraction between the water molecules itself. So this will cause the water droplet on the freshly cut piece of wood to spread out, forming a thin layer okay, in order to minimize the surface area of the water. So that makes option D the correct option, okay, adhesive to water. Adhesive means of the force of attraction between molecules of different substance okay so water has a higher attraction for the molecules of other substance than between water molecule itself so this will be the reason why the water will spread out to form a thin layer on the surface of the wood so that makes option d the correct option question 59 which of the following statements is correct about the angle of dip at various points on earth so angle of dip is the same as angle of inclination okay and it is the angle between the direction of the earth's horizontal magnetic field and the horizontal okay and this angle of dip varies all over the earth's surface okay from 90 degree near the geographical poles to zero degree near the equator okay so let's go through our option and pick the correct option so a the angle of dip is zero at the equator and 90 degrees at the magnetic poles why B, the angle of dip is greater at higher altitudes than at lower altitudes. C, the angle of dip is positive in the northern hemisphere and negative in the southern hemisphere. Why D, the angle of dip is constant at all points on Earth. So the correct answer to this uh, question is option A. The angle of dip is zero okay, at the equator and 90 degrees at the geographical poles, also known as the magnetic poles. Okay, so that makes option A the correct option. Question 60. In the diagram above, if the south poles of two magnets stroke a steeper, the polarities at S and Y will respectively be A, south and north, B, north and south, C, north and north, and D, south and south. Okay, so the polarities at point C and Y will respectively be north and north. Okay, since you are stroking the pole with south-south, so the opposite of the polarity will be translated to the T. Okay, so in that case, that will be north and north. So that makes option C the correct option. Question 61. Which of the following types of electromagnetic waves is used in nine vision goggles? A, microwave, B, ultraviolet waves, C, infrared waves, and D, radio waves so the answer to this question is option c infrared waves so infrared waves are used in night vision goggles because they can penetrate darkness okay and anyone putting on such goggles will be able to see objects clearly in the dark so that makes option c the correct option question 62 which of the following is a type of wave that is both mechanical and longitudinal so a we have water waves, B, seismic waves, C, sound waves, and D, light wave. So the correct answer to this question is C, sound waves. So sound waves are mechanical waves that are longitudinal. So what this means is that the particles of the medium through which sound wave travels, such as air or water, move back and forth, okay, as the direction of the wave travel. So that makes option C the correct option, sound wave. Do you have any question to ask? Please feel free to ask your question by clicking on the link in the description below. This will take you to my school website. There you can ask all your questions and solutions will be provided to you within a short period of time. 
Moving on to question 63. In an AC circuit, resonance occurs when the impedance of the circuit is A0, B maximum, C equal to the capacitive reactance of the circuit, D minimum. So in an AC circuit, resonance occurs when the inductive reactance is equal to the capacitive reactance. So at this point, the capacitive reactance will cancel out the inductive reactance. So as a result of this, the impedance of the circuit is minimum. Okay, so that makes option D the correct option, minimum. Do you have better explanation or step to any of this question? All you have to do is to go to the comment section, comment the question number and the solution you wish to share. Question 64. The pitch of a musical note is determined by the frequency of the sound wave that it produces. If two instruments have the same frequency, which of the following factors will most affect the difference in their pitches? A, the shape of the instrument, B, the tension of the spring, C, the size of the instrument, and D, the material of the instrument. So of all the uh, factors listed, of all the options listed here, okay, they all affect the pitch of a musical note. Okay? But option B has the highest effect okay, on the pitch of a musical note. Okay, so if we have two instruments with the same frequency and one of them has a tighter string, the one with tighter string is going to produce a higher pitch okay, than the one with uh, less tight uh, string. So that makes option B the correct option. Question 65. A metal sphere is placed on an insulating stand. A negatively charged rod is brought close to it. If the sphere is heated, and the rod is taken away, what will be the charge on the sphere? So when a negatively charged rod is brought close to a metal sphere, what happens is that the free electron on the metal sphere will be repaired away from the rod and moved to the opposite end okay, of the metal sphere. This creates a region of positive charges on the metal sphere that is closest to the rod and a region of negative charge on the opposite side of the metal sphere. This charge distribution continues until the net force on the free electron is equal to zero. So if the metal sphere is heated and the negatively charged rod is removed, free electron will flow from the metal sphere to the ground, thus leaving a net positive charge on the metal sphere. Okay, so that makes option C the correct uh, option. The sphere will have a net positive charge. I believe you are getting something from this video lesson. If yes, please do not forget to hit the like button, click on the subscribe button, and lastly, tap on the notification bell to get informed as soon as we release the next videos.